All right, I'm gonna try out some vanilla now. on. 
I have the lights on, the only one light. And then uh, I also have uh, both the rear lights, the rear tail lights on. I charged them at the clubhouse, so I think they should last. So it looks like it did rain just a little bit. Excuse me if I wipe the lens every now and then. Uh, and it's windy. My legs feel pumped. All right, you know, left off from the last video talking about Russia, Ukraine. I did want to talk a little bit more about it because talk a little bit more about it because uh, it's gonna well it may affect you it may not affect you uh, it'll, it'll definitely affect everybody because if you haven't noticed gas prices have gone up gas prices have gone up all right <laughs> expect expect to pay more in energy cost expect uh, maybe your stocks to go down and interest rates to go up uh, expect, uh, man, just expect a lot of things, and all of them are not really good. Oh, watch out, truck. So all of them are not really good, in my opinion, okay? So, and inflation will probably continue, supply chain will probably continue. And what's so... What, is, what does this all mean for Russia? Why did Russia do all this? Well, if you ask me, it's very simple. Remember when I talked about global conflict and a sense of reorganization of the world powers, the world order? I think Russia sees in a, a chance to reposition itself to be on the top even above China. And of course, China's gonna help because here's my, here's what I think the scenarios are. Okay, a couple scenarios. My ant mound's already coming out. A couple scenarios, okay. Uh, uh, the best scenario I'm hoping for, this is what I'm hoping for. I don't know if this is really gonna happen, but uh, Russia takes over parts of Ukraine, stops there, and then it'll just be a cold war. Uh, mainly against Russia. Uh, China will most likely be on the side of Russia. China will most likely be on the side of Russia and uh, but still maintain relations with the rest of the world producing, you know, cheap Chinese stuff. And we'll just be in a Cold War. That's all we're going to be in. And it'll be another Cold War until somebody financially collapses. I don't know who it's gonna be, but uh, I hope it's not America, but it seems like it's gonna be America. Uh, anyways, it's not gonna be a total financial collapse, but if you look at like New York, California, if you look at like New York, New York City in particular, and uh, San Francisco in particular, uh, those places aren't doing so well. A lot of people have migrated out of those states for a very good reason. So, in areas of dense population, city, urban areas, that's where you're going to see the collapse. I don't think I'm going to see a collapse out here, but crime is spreading. So you're going to see a rise in crime. So that's another thing you got to watch out for. So that's going to happen. Right. And so that's the best case scenario I'm hoping for. That that's that's what's gonna be. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna jump. It looks like it rained here. I'm just gonna take the bridge. Or no, that's alright. I'll just I'll do a light jump. There we go. So that's a that's the best case scenario. It looks like it's raining up there. I hope I don't get caught in the rain. Dun 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 squirrel. So that's 
that's the best case scenario that I'm hoping for. Um, worst case scenario is Russia doesn't stop at Ukraine or the two uh, independent <laughs> separatist regions, all right? Russia doesn't stop there. They just keep going and going until they take over Ukraine, possibly Poland, um, possibly what, whatever, whatever Stan or whatever Eastern European country there is over there that was once part of Russia, the Soviet Union at one time. So that's that's the worst case scenario, and of course, uh, that's that's full out invasion. That's full out war. That's global war, and it's going to be World War Three, with a slight caveat of of in some ways uh, an endless war, possibly an endless war. And so one side, and it's not going to be like a, it's not going to be a war where you take over the country or you, you invade a country or you retake a country and then the war is over when the enemy is uh, subdued completely, like you've taken over the, the, the land uh, because of nuclear weapons. So what I think is going to happen most likely is that the war will continue on for a very, if, if it's a full out, if it's a war war, it will continue on until everyone depletes their resources and whoever has any resources left is most likely going to take over everything. It's going to be all, it's going to be an all for, all in, all or nothing kind of scenario. And uh, the country, the government that better manages their supplies their resources it's going to take over the world all right pretty much and then you, that's where you have your your uh, um, sorry I'm looking around just make sure I'm safe looking at the clouds that's where you're going to have your uh, new world order a new order all right new global superpowers. How it's going to shake up, I don't know. I'm guessing China is hoping that they come out on top because uh, they're not going to actually do anything until the very end. They're going to try to they're going to try to uh, stockpile whatever resources they have and let everybody else duke it out and then when everybody dwindles on their resource they're going to try to come in at the end. So uh, that's my guess. They're gonna try to. I don't know how it's gonna really turn out uh, because of the fact that everybody has nuclear or most most uh, developed nations, the superpowers have nuclear weapons. Um, it's not gonna end by an invasion of their country. It's gonna end by depletion of their resources and people realizing that they're not able to win. That they're going to surrender eventually, hopefully peacefully. There might be that one rogue country. Iran, Iran that decides to go, screw it, we're, ne we're not gonna, we don't have a chance unless we nuke everybody. Unless we nuke, well they'll nuke one country and then that country will nuke them back and maybe another country, you know, once they see the ballistic, the nuclear ballistic missiles go up in the air, everybody's gonna launch their missiles, probably. It's gonna cause a chain reaction, then everybody will be, you know, at the bottom and that's their hope that uh, that maybe they could win somehow Iran I'm talking about they could win because everybody's dropped to the bottom they have a level play playing field to win because right now you know countries like Iran they don't have a chance no way no way They're, the likelihood of Iran coming out on top on uh, the reorganization of world order very low so so that's the worst case scenario and it'll be very long very long uh, so the, the last the, 
the most likely scenario, the most likely scenario is that it'll be, it'll be a proxy war. It'll be a proxy war uh, directly against Russia. Of course, Russia's invading. So you got the NATO, you got Western Europe. They're going to supply those countries around Ukraine and Ukraine with Maybe, maybe, maybe with some bodies, covertly. But mainly they're going to supply weapons, support, intelligence. I just had a bug hit me right in the glasses. Support, intelligence. Oh, okay, good, it's not raining. So that's what you're going to see. I'm going to wipe the lens one more time, just in case. So... Be a very long proxy war. It'll be a mix of a hot and cold war, but essentially a proxy war. And you can't, Ukraine will become the, the Syria of the uh, Eastern Europe for the most part. But you, in, in some ways, they're in a civil war. You could say that. There's some kind of civil war, but not really. But it'll be a proxy war directly against Russia. And that's probably the most likely scenario. I don't, you know, there's no way that you know, you're going to allow a country to just take over another country or even a part of another country without repercussions. And it may not be a military retaliation and financial retaliation. You know, Russia is trying to get off the U.S. dollar. They have a, a supply of oil. You know. They've been buying gold along with China. So I don't think they're going to be worried about the sanctions, but over long term, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. They're going to be isolated. But I think that's the plan all along because all the countries in the world, they're, they're being isolated. They're going into isolationism. And so I just don't see any good coming out of this. So what I would... Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna try to situate myself the best I can to hopefully uh, come out without uh, going into some kind of concentration camp or being drafted in the uh, military. I'm too old anyway, but you never know. Desperate times, desperate measures. So drafted in the military, I'm gonna worry about my children being drafted. There is potential for that. I mean, global war, I, I mentioned it before. Global conflict, it's happening. I mean, you got Russia and you got Western Europe. They're colliding. They're colliding. Uh, mainly over, I believe, mainly resource. I think resource is going to be the key. The fight is always resource. It's never political. Whatever it may be, it's... It's really bad if it's political. If it's political, then we're all screwed. But I'm hoping for I'm hoping for a proxy war. That's the best scenario. That buys that buys some time, and cooling off heads will cool off a little bit, and it'll just be a border. It'll be a it'll eventually turn into a cold war, and then it's a it's a financial struggle will be the best country that can manage their finances. Anyways, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all next time. It was nice talking to you. Bye-bye.